bottles of wine. Bottles and bottles of wine. Ooh, copper lab. You whipped your pants? And then where does this go? That goes right next to the fridge. Yeah. Ready? Okay. That's a strange. Just watch out for the upper right hand corner. There's a glass that's bigger than the rest. And I almost chipped it. Ooh. And Captain Morgan was at the bottom, right? Uh, uh, the upper left hand corner was Captain Morgan. Right and after that, I have to build Here, I'll try to explain for you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Does it, how does it? I see. What the heck? So I'm getting the idea that some of these don't fit in there perfectly. Okay. Well, we should okay. split that bottle with Captain Morgan and pass it around. Oh shoot, <laughs> man, that would be awesome. That would be great. Uh... Is that the bottle that uh, Matt brought for us? Matt brought a bottle of something. Really? Yeah, it was one of those days that he could stop by. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one on top of the black thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now what do you need? Uh, let me take this thing out. Right, it's five to seven. So, five minutes to seven? That's, what, that's what I thought we just did, but it's supposed to be five minutes to seven. They put nine forty. So, we actually. No, no, no. I thought we did one. that one already. Didn't we I do like from music videos? Let's do. Oh, I'll put a. Last one we did. Some scenes depend, once again, depend. No, because I set it to a couple you minutes really before 7. To, yeah, that's a 7 o'clock. Like it's a well executed blunder, but that's, seven o'clock. that's 7 o'clock. It still feels blocked. So I did that one. So that was the last one we did. Yeah, so one really no, and then we did 945 to do a blunder yeah. from 1 to 945. Oh, cool. Okay. And they would zoom all the way in, and then yeah. people doing some yeah. stuff, and they'd run over. Yeah. And they'd like get in the car, and it would yeah. zoom out, and then it would like get on the freeway, and then like get off on this immediately. There you go, a little, a little taste of what's going on here. Helping these guys move stuff. Conversations about, they're trying to shoot a clock on the wall right now. We've spent 20 minutes just simply shooting, trying to shoot a clock on the wall. No, I know what it was. It was Laura, yeah, it was Lori. Yeah, it was Lori on the phone. Getting the message, that's what I'm going to revive you. All the way down. Okay. So then we got to be kind of Unless we missed that wrong time, let me find out. Hold on. So we that got is... seven as well. We got and then we have five minutes to midnight. Or a minute to midnight. Then we get to 9.45? Lori looks over at the clock, which reads 9.55. So that's the one that was the 9.45. Okay. okay, so, so we got to go. Let's uh, fast forward to now. There's a lot like, happening. Um, almost 11 o'clock. Hello. Oh, bummer. Nope. I just got this look. Just got a look. Not a good look. I look like, who the hell are you? Kind of look. Well, that's okay. We'll see if we can get some more. Besides, what kind of game would this be if occasionally someone didn't you know, not say hi? Just get kind of boring if they didn't.
listening to Inspirato Projecto. This is your host, CEC. If you have iTunes, feel free to search for us in the podcast area and to subscribe to us. If you like this kind of programming, perhaps there'll be something in here that you hear that inspires you to go out and test, test out your life, test it out like a video game. You know, we're all, we're all just avatars in this big simulation. Choose your own adventure. Man. Uh, I don't know if I recorded it yesterday. Oh, by the way, real fast. So that was uh, John Garside from Forgotten Tales. Please, please check out his videos on YouTube. He does, um, he works in uh, the, uh, Whittier area works out there and he's just got a thirst for knowledge he wants to know about his his surrounding community how it came to be and as a result of that his curiosity led him through lots of investigations and uh, lots coming across lots of discoveries things for instance he saw, he found the, the pieces of a missing airplane that crashed into a hill many, many decades ago. And he did some research, and it turns out um, he learned some very exciting information, and he decided, I need to share this with the public. So he started making these sort of mini documentaries. I'd call it a TV show. I think it'd be awesome on Netflix or anywhere, Hulu, PBS. This is a PBS kind of thing. He's like a Huell Hauser of sorts. He'll interview people who are actually still alive, who were alive back when that particular story took place. So it's great because he's finding people who are still alive to this day who can tell, you know, tell their side of it. And a lot of great ones. There's a great one about the Whittier earthquake. There's one about the Electrodome. Uh which is basically a story about a real-life mad scientist who used to, who built uh, this machine out of an oil... Uh, don't even know the proper terminology, oil thing. And he built his uh, electrodome up there. And that's the same technology that was used... Uh, well, by Harp and a bunch of these other places out there, uh, Japan, Australia. They used the same technology for their weather controlling devices he just does great work so check his stuff out on YouTube if you get a chance it's really great, it's very educational and he's being approached many many times out on the street by folks who recognize him they'll go to a Starbucks or something and uh, they're like, oh by the way thank you for telling that story You know that forgot. I saw that latest Forgotten Tales and I love the story you told about this particular thing because it turns out that my grandpa was, you know, one of those, one of those people, one of those people featured in your, in your story. So he'll get stuff like that all the time. He's been getting invited to go talk at these, um, at libraries and all kinds of different places and to show off his films, show, you know, project it and then talk about the story and wow, man, he, he is just like a real life Indiana Jones, I gotta tell you. So, we'll, uh, you'll always hear on Inspirato Projecto, thanks to Anchor, this app that I use for the, all these podcasts. Um, once I realized that I could take the radio station with me wherever I go, wherever I go, the radio station is. Speaking of which, I'm on my way to Kei Chung Studios in Chi- Chinatown, 16.30 a.m. And so today's show... Uh, the radio show version, as you well know, if you've been listening to this podcast, this happens all the time, sometimes three times a day. Too many thoughts to just be contained. So today, uh, we're heading up to K Chung Studios, which is great because the so the radio sh- the radio show the radio version of this show happens the first and third. Monday, just another manic Monday. Yeah. Uh, I know it's fun, yeah. 
Yeah, sometimes I gotta run D to make sure I catch the train. And just another manic Monday. Just another manic Monday, K Chung. It's a lot of fun, D. K Chung. It does not happen on Sunday. Oh, I know for sure it's on Monday. Yo, the first and third Monday of every month. I'm not trying to be fundy. So that's where I'm heading now. We got Alex Smart in the studios. Every once in a while, I'll uh, hand the reins over to Alex Smart. So he he uh, is the guest. He knows a lot of very interesting people. As you know, he's a performance artist. So he's always meeting lots of folks out there in Venice Beach. He's a bicycle activist. So he's always meeting people, you know, he's riding his bike and through his YouTube channel. So that's the other thing, too. Check out Don't Feed the Animals. I actually, on one of these podcasts, I uh, I uh, put one of his videos in here, and by videos, I mean the audio of a video. He's got a channel called Don't Feed the Animals. He's got a funny little squirrel in there named Sherman Sitter. He's called Sherman Sitter the LCD Squirrel, and he... He helps fix computer issues, and uh, it's it's just just a just a great show. It's 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 uh, very educational. So while we got John Garstai doing the forgotten tales about history, we got Alex Smart doing history of the now, so to speak, letting you know what your rights are as a bicycle bicyclist, and where you're able to, you know, when you're able to take the lane, so to speak. Uh, where good bicycle pads are, thing, things of that nature. He'll go out to the marathons and uh, interview these guys. It's really cool. It's really cool. I never knew so much about uh, bicycling before as I do now, thanks to him. So we're heading our way up to the K Chung Studios. And I think what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to record some of the K Chung Studios version. Now, as some of you know, as I've described, I must remember to keep the volume off on this thing. That will be happening. So you'll be able to hear what's going on in the studio. You get a, you get a behind the scenes peek. Also, we're gonna be broadcasting on Periscope. If you got Periscope, that's also a fun way to watch the show if you want. Uh, I bring Periscope in there and I try to broadcast uh, whenever I can, whenever we got signals in there. I like to broadcast through uh, um, through Periscope, so you can actually you get a get a visual of what's happening in there. Just with today's technology, this ability to put put media into the hands of the artists, where there's no middleman, it's just the artist and just bam, artist and 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 distribution basically, marrying those two together. God, it's just such a so exciting that this this these possibilities uh, exist. So, yes, simulcasting. Plus, that idea of simulcasting has always intrigued me. I remember growing up there, going, "Okay, tonight's event is simulcasted," and that that episode or whatnot would actually be playing on three or four different. Uh, channels on the same time, which is so interesting to think that these these network channels actually got together and decided to cooperate in that fashion. So, um, I feel myself hunching over more and more every single time. Thank God I see these. I mean, it's a terrible, terrible thing to be thankful thankful for, but these folks with uh, canes walking along slow, hunched over, it's a reminder that I need to really work on my posture. It's always been an issue with me. Pasture, pasture, pasture. Not because I got, you know, it's not because it's like the pasture police have been after me. Whenever I, I just realized, like, oh, geez, man. I gotta, I gotta keep, keep good pasture. Oh, boy. Looks like the train came in. It looks like it'll be leaving soon. However, we're not gonna run. 
We're gonna go ahead and get our and fill up our tap card. funding to the tab card. Let's throw a fiver in there. Yeah. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the fare has been loaded. Should take us about, uh, I don't know, about an hour, almost maybe, 45, 48 minutes. We can test that theory. The time right now is, what we got here? 11.43 a.m. Oh, geez, here it is. The train's here. Hear my train coming. Hear my train coming. I usually like to go. No, I ain't got no I usually like to go to the last car. A lot of times you, you get the ruffians in there. Other times you get open seats. So we're going to see how it is today. Our, our today in terms of seating. Oh, good. All right, here we go. All right. Very good, very good. All right, this seems decent. Oh! So, uh, oh, man. It's a hot one out here. One second. Let me take this jerk off. So, okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I started out saying, oh, wow, so yesterday we had that Yachtly Crew show. God, there are a million things that I, I really hope that we got the Ruby Tuesday interview on there at the end of the show. She was there with her friend. She was one of the uh, original dancers on American Bandstand. They have these reunions every once in a while, and so all these uh, folks will show up and they'll play American Bandstand movies and reminisce about, about ye olden days. She was a uh, hairstylist for the TV uh, and mo movie industry and whatnot. It was through that that she, that's how she ended up meeting Andy Kaufman. And he found out that she was a uh, mud wrestler at the time. And he said, oh, I'll, I'll wrestle you. And, and if um, you pin me, I'll give you loads of $5,000 or something. And she pinned him twice. I don't know if you caught that in our conversation yesterday. She pinned him twice. You can actually see the evidence of it. She's the only woman documented to have pinned Andy Kaufman. Her video is on, she's got a lot of videos on YouTube. Ruby Tuesday. Hello, Ruby Tuesday. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Okay, here's a synchronicity opening up for me right now. Real fast, okay, back to the Ruby Tuesday. Check out her YouTube channel. Look in Ruby Tuesday wrestles Andy Kaufman, and you'll see you'll see some great footage. Now, back to the synchronicity. Yesterday we were talking about the idea of sleeping in public, the idea of having that kind of trust, having that kind of ability and comfortability to just sprawl out on a bench out there, trusting your everything to what may happen. And I would say that would probably be a good sign, possibly, of someone's psychology. I mean, I guess you could look at it in so many different ways. One of them could be, this person doesn't know any better, or... Oh, good, oh, good. we've got someone talking over here. Hopefully we can catch this. Let's see if we can get this.
next stop is Universal City, Studio City Station, and Lancashire Boulevard in Campo de Galenga. Connect here with the shuttle to Universal Studios Hollywood and the City Walk upstairs and across the bridge. I just realized that I myself, I myself have actually fallen asleep out in public on the beach. When I first moved out to California, I was reading Rum Diary by Hunter S. Thompson at the time. I just got that. And it was just, you know, like unearthed from an archive. And so, as, as it's been said, it's one of the only books that Hunter has done where he does not play that character, uh, Dr. Gonzo, which is also my cat's name. Oh, wait, he's Raul Duke. He was Raul Duke. That's right. That was his. That was his alias, Raul Duke. So I would go out to those beaches, and I would just fall asleep on that towel. I'd go out there, put in, you know, two hours for the meter, read some of the book, fall asleep to the waves, wake up, read the book. So I guess I have slept out in public. Now that I think about it, I think of other times I might have slept in public. Just. Well, I have fallen asleep at parties before, that's, that's for sure. I've fallen asleep at parties. I remember getting yelled at by people. Well, what are you doing? We're at a party. You can't be falling asleep. Well, I think when you when you drink a lot of coffee during the day, <laughs> there is that, that crash that happens. And, some, and then you just fall asleep sometimes. That was the thing yesterday when we did Black Pumpkin. So in the morning, uh, as you heard, I was with Philly Ocean in the car, and he drove us, drove me up to the gig in Simi Valley and Cronies, Cronies Barn Grill. We played out there, and there's this little kid out there. He had his ukulele, such a cool little kid. He called it his guitar and he was playing his ukulele while we were, while we were jamming. Jamming love songs to the populace. He was out there jamming. And so we loaded in at like 11 a.m. We didn't play until 3.45. Played a long set. Jenny, Jenny came out, so did Tiffany Agrabite, Agrabite, right, and her husband Jason and his family. Jason and his mom, their favorite song is Baker Street. So we made sure to blast, blast open their minds with Baker Street. On the way up there, I don't know if I caught this story. Phil had come back from New York. And interesting enough, wow, but I'm thinking about it, Tiffany showed up, because Tiffany Tiffany told me about this place called Meow Wolf, which I think is in Arizona. It's like this big interactive, big interactive place. You walk around it and there are notes and all kinds of amazing art. She said they're gonna make one out here in Los Angeles, which I'd love to help contribute to in some way. So she told me all about Meow Wolf. Recently, had the Sugar Plums dancing in my head about that place because I'd love to visit that place and or, of course, be, be part of you know, one of the designers. So that was kind of in my brain. And then Phil tells me that out there in New York, there's this uh, sort of a hotel that you enter and it's like made up in the 1930s. I guess there are a bunch of levels, a bunch of floors. going on and it's a choose your own adventure it's like you're in a real life video game so for about two hours so you go there there go there with your friends but then they break you up and so there might be a character that comes out and you go off and you talk with them and you figure something out or there might be another character that you go with and you talk with them about something and every single time it's a different adventure
adventure. It's a, I, I would say it's a wonderful way for people with social anxiety and who love video games. But I think that would be a perfect situation because added to that, he was telling me you wear masks when you go in there, so no one knows who is who. It's got that sort of eyes wide shut vibe. And you're led through this whole experience. So while you're walking down a hallway, someone might come out of the door and say, oh, help me find this thing, or I'm looking for this thing. Man, I would love to be a part of something like that. It would be so fun to help contribute to the reality of, of a world like that, to bring that reality forward. had the show, I got over to Reseda, where we were shooting, I think I was telling you before, we had four days left of Black Pumpkin to shoot. Black Pumpkin, which is the unofficial sequel to Bloody Bobby. So when Black Pumpkin 2 comes out, it's unofficially Bloody Bobby 3, so it's very interesting. It's BB and BP. So that'll be a lot of fun. Once. Okay, so we had two, so we shot last night and yesterday. Okay, so that was the thing. Straight from Yachtly Crew, we drew, uh, Jenny, Jenny was there, showed up with some friends of hers, and so she drove me to Reseda, and we had some more stuff to shoot, which you heard last night, last night's podcast. So holy moly, oh, I didn't even get home until probably... 3.34 a.m. It was very, very early. Wow, man. I got all my scenes done. So I'm done shooting that movie. Can't wait to see how this is cut together. Oh my god, it's so crazy. Send me your audio files. I will include it in the podcast and also the radio show. That's why I love the podcast because it's such an immediate thing. The radio show is just working on the first and third Monday. This I can do whenever, however. Etc. 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 You take care. Stay inspired. And we'll talk more later. Chinatown train ready to uh, ready to to blast off. The beeping you heard was the door just kept opening and closing. There's no one there. I'm thinking perhaps either uh, invisible forces walk through, or that's one of the first signs of AI waking up, waking up to itself self-awareness or it goes hmm I can open and close my jaws hmm what could I can do it's like a little kid waking up to their look at what this hand does these little stubby little these little bony things look what these things can do and then they start blinking and, and blah, blah, sticking their tongue out and, you know they're they're waking up to that evolution that's unfolding, they're learning more and more about what they're capable of, and I think, I think that could possibly be what the 
what the door was all about. But now, now this is the thing that I want to say. On the way to Chinatown, uh, about to meet Alec Smart, who will be hosting the program. Now arriving at Chinatown Station. I'm a guest on today's program. He's got a buddy coming in. And it turns out Captain Nicholas will not be at the helm driving the ship today. So we're going to make the most and the best of our situation and see how see how it all unfolds. Imagine, I'm anticipating, imagining, and expecting a great show today. I'm expecting it's going to be a great show today. Uh, I think his friend that he's going to have in here, I think he... I think he's promoting a one-man show, so we'll be talking about that. And uh, get getting that out there into the world. So you're gonna go on a journey with me as we I'm trying to think if we've done this in the past. Yeah, I think we have. It's all part of the this is where we're going theme. We're walking past the rocks. Here. So you can hear that there's like fountains spouting out of it. And uh, I'm walking through these buildings, these red buildings, and there are balconies. There are balconies that go along the side of the building and they sweep up in front, right in front of you. And then there are these red lamps that are. It's really interesting. It's very science fiction-y. It feels very science fiction-y. I mean, just this right here. I gotta remind myself to uh, take a photo of this. This imagery of looking up at the lamps. Do, 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 do. Looking up at the lamps. Do, 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 do. Wow. So. There are a lot of interesting places out here that just have such great, great looks to them. That Bradbury building, wow, that's awesome. Now I need to do my research, but I think if Ray Bradbury's name is on it, I don't know, it's, I don't know if it's called the Ray Bradbury building or if it's just Bradbury. Bradbury, hello there. I'm R Raimundo Bradbury. Bradbury, mm, yes, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. I'm, hello, I'm Raimundo. Broad bread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Raimundo. Broad bread. Bur broad, broad bread. Broad bread. So, uh, so, uh, It's just so much activity going on out here in, in Chinatown. Like, there's just so many cool buildings. It's really, truly its own reality. You got people who are not really aware of what side of the street, you know, sidewalk to walk on. It's so much fun. It's fun. It turns into an adventure just on its own, just walking down the sidewalk. I like to treat the sidewalk like when you drive a car, you are you know, you drive on the right side of the street. I like to, that's how I do it. It's kind of built in your brain. There you go. California, I, I, maybe it's just all over the place, but it wasn't until I actually truly became a pedestrian that I started noticing this stuff. Uh, maybe it's all over the place. But in California, I noticed it's so interesting. Um, it's happened on many occasions where I was just, you know, on the right side of the street, and I see someone maybe 200 feet away. We're looking at each other. We see each other. Okay, there's that person. Here's me. And then they slowly creep over into my lane. Now you're left with the decision. Do I change lanes? Am I going to be the, you know, okay. I'm going to take this into consideration. Do I step out of the way and let them continue? Or do I continue and we let them step out of the way? So what I've been doing lately is when it gets to that point and I get close and they get closer to me, I slow down. I slow down. 
and all of a sudden this weird psychology thing. It's all of a sudden now they go and they walk. Um, they walk around me. So that's a little bit of uh, that's a little bit of uh, an experiment you can utilize for yourself. Oh, oh. We're gonna bring. We're gonna get some water. We're gonna get some water for these guys. For these guys. I think while we're here too, we since we're getting some water, we owe it to ourselves to uh, get some coffee as well, of course. Perhaps even some of these totally delicious macaroons. These macaroons are always so good. Always so good. I tend to like to eat the to eat it close to the microphone. I really want the audience, because I know I appreciate it so much. Um, I think that's why podcasts are so cool. You know, you got these people sometimes, they're out on the street walking around. That's what was so fun listening to Frank and Nora um, during the days. Uh, and I can't say that I'm not involved in the Andy Kaufman stuff anymore. However, it was really big time prominent with the Andy Kaufman Live stuff, you know, back in, I don't know, 2005, 2006, whatnot. And Frank Nora had his, I think he still has his podcast, Overnightscape, and so he would record a podcast on his way to work and then on his way home, and then he would upload those things. And it was just really cool listening to all the sounds around him, um, hearing, you know, the shouting, the uh, the construction stuff going on, the honking, the, you know, um, all that stuff. It was just really cool to hear, and that, that was inspiring, that aspect of like, oh, cool, you know, I'm right here, right here with this guy. We're going through this this journey together so I partially this podcast is like that passing that kind of that personal feeling of like holy cow we are in this thing together anything can happen at this moment that's why I love the synchronicity so much because when I'm broadcasting when I'm, when I'm recording on this there's a better chance that some amazing usu is going to sweep its way through This is the other cool thing. Right now it's 12.30. The show starts at 1. Alex Smart is at the studios as we speak. I gave him the door code, so I, uh, ideally he's in there. So I left the house at like 11.30 today, and I'm surprised I got here uh, when I did. Hi. Um, I'd like to get this and this, and also a uh, like 16-ounce coffee. That sounds good. Please. Yeah. Yeah, medium size looks good. I like that one. Yes. We're ordering these. Uh, these are what they're, they're calling them the vanilla butter cookies. Vanilla butter cookies and two waters. And get my coffee. Isn't it fun to go along on trips with people? That ambiance. Just to think there are genres. As we had Brian DeVille on the radio show the other day, there are genres. Also, here we go. We're going to pay for this. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Oh, and may I have a bag, please? Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. You, hmm? Oh, my sign. Oh, sign in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, and in the meantime, can I have a little more coffee in here? I'm not going to put any uh, yeah. milk in there or anything. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Another 
day, another coffee. Oh yeah, thank you so much. I just love your coffee. This is gonna taste so good. Really? Oh yeah, this coffee's great. Thank you so much, you take care. Okay, we are on the road. We are on the road again. Wonder Bakery, Wonder Bakery. Sometimes, sometimes Inspirato Projecto is, well, I like to say sponsored. Um, just because it sounds funny, sounds official, sounds professional. Sometimes Inspirato Projecto is sponsored by Wonder Bakery. And by sponsored, I mean sometimes we eat their macaroons, sometimes we drink their coffee, sometimes we're drinking their water. There are a lot of different variations that can go into a Wonder Bakery experience. After all, they have ice cream, they've got uh, what might be homemade cakes, all kinds of delightful pastries meat pies, and other unexpected foodstuffs. Unexpected foodstuffs. That's a good way of describing it. Remember one time I was walking through Chinatown with some friends, and uh, we walked past... Oh, yeah, my buddy Andy Smith. Tiff, Tiffany, who I mentioned earlier, was at the Outley Cruise Show. We were out in, we were walking past Chinatown, and we, or walking through Chinatown, we walked past a storefront, and at first I was like, oh wow, they got a pet shop with frogs. And then we looked closer and we realized, oh no, those frogs are for sale for different reasons. And we realized, oh, I guess if you're gonna eat frog legs, they gotta come from somewhere, huh? Until they, they, the infamous they, until the infamous they makes uh, like uh, an organic kind of f uh, frog leg meat-like product substance, until that happens, it looks like everyone will just have to be content with eating the real thing. Do you think you know how vegans there are those turkeys, mold, turkey molds? That's always seems interesting to me. That, you know, people, they cannot, they, they miss the taste of turkey or whatnot. And yet, here's a, a, mo a turkey mold. So it still reminds the people that it looks like the turkey. Which is the whole point of not eating the turkeys, because it's an animal. But this thing will remind you. So interesting. So I wonder if they got frog leg vegan vegan uh, things. I wonder what spices and seasons. There must be a chart out there that someone has made that's, uh, you know, like chemistry. Like, okay, that says you mix these things together and it tastes like that. Mix these things together and it tastes like that. Here's this season, you know, Sprinkle, let's say, seven sprinkles of this, two sprinkles of that. Add this, and before you know it, you got the taste of chicken or frog legs or what have you. So, that is very intriguing to me. Ideally, Mr. Alex Smart has, we're in the building now, ideally Alec has been able to get his way into the building I gave him. Hey, there he is. Did the, yeah, did the door code work? I, I hit the code, it worked, but I didn't know how to open it. Okay, can you that hold, uh, let's see, can you hold this bag for me, please? Do you need two hands or some trick? I think I just at least need my prehensile tail is tucked in right uh, now. It definitely worked. 3136. There we go. There we go. That's great, that's so cool. Turn it, turn it off, right? Yeah, I think so. We are going to stick around. We are going to have afterthoughts. So thanks again, and we will see you in 10 seconds. We're chasing the semifinal. There's a gun. It's magical, isn't it?
I believe we're probably still in the air at this point. I think it's the master off. Oh, he likes it when we watch him and make him nervous. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, Kurt, if you need any help, Steve just maybe uses that program all the time. Oh, Audacity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll find a good spot to save this on the. Can you label like DFTA show, IPR, DFTA show, or something like that? Let's see. Can they hear us now, Stu? I don't think so. No. I'll shut it all off. I've lost 85 pounds. Keto is the one that no carbs? Or no, no carbs, no, no, carbs, no carbs, no sugar. Yeah, sugar is the bad one. Because that makes you more hungry. But um, I'm 48 years old. And I look like I'm in my 20s. Because of that? Well, I look pretty young already, but I've dropped about 10 years off my face just by just with getting rid of that stuff. That's so interesting. So what do you eat? Rice or I don't eat rice, I don't eat potatoes, I don't eat We could talk about this one. Yeah. Do you have uh what's the do you have a, t a sh show title that you want to call uh, it? Uh you can just call it DFTA show and then put the date if you want. Um what it, what could be the title? Bee killer bees, I don't know. How about killer bees? I didn't play killer queen. I used to know how to play that in piano. Have you heard, have you heard of a guy named on YouTube called Cod in the Shadows? Caught in the Shadows. Caught in the Shadows. Caught he does the shadows. pop song reviews, but he, is, he does a whole video series. It's him in nearly darkness, and he's wearing a hoodie. You never know what he looks like. And he just does reviews, like One Hit Wonderland is one of his things. And, oh, that's interesting. And, 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 and why some pop songs suck and why some songs are great. Oh yeah, this is the podcast. We're still live on the podcast. Yeah, this will be saved later. Okay. Is this the inter thoughts? Uh, oh. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Intra thoughts. <laughs> Intra thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. See. Well, it could be either one of those. It could take us from one to the other. Which would be Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we gotta wait for this to export. We, could, we got a little bit of time here, and then. And then you can restart it. Yeah. Do you have anywhere you need to be? No. Well, I usually just go. Um, I don't know if it's not right. I usually just go um, for like you know how how long we want to do like fifteen minutes or something. Like that. So it depends on you know. How, but I always like to separate it, like make the show, and then that goes in the archives. And yeah. So then, just so the gnomes at Cage Hunt will know what to do. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's start up a new. So for the for this um, for this audacity, all right. So that one stopped. If I start recording again, no, it's, you need to start a new track. New track. You, 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 you've already exported this as one track. You need to create a new track. I mean, a new a new file actually. Just new file. All right, let's go like this. Oh wait. Oh, I know what I can do. I can just delete this thing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Alright, so that's recording. You already saved it though, right? Yeah, that original, the one we just did is <laughs> saved. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so cool. Or this is. Slash, slash. So we're on the air now. Oh. Oh. Uh, right. That's why, that's why this is Afterthoughts. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you. I think it's. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, we got on. Um, Audacity, it's going live. It's live. It's we are live. We are live on the air with Afterthoughts. Don't be the animal special inspiral projecto radio Afterthoughts. Steve Brock is still here. Yes, and uh, we mean still here. You say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> but now you just the one being dumb. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not as, as sharp as me. What are you talking about? I'm smart. Okay. Two plus two is four. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's four plus four. Uh, 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 eight. Okay. <laughs> you got another one, smart guy. What's the square root of, of two? Uh, 
tour or two is, this is route two. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, all right, so what were you were talking about keto? I'm doing the ketogenic diet. I've lost 85 pounds since December. 85 pounds since December. Yeah. How is that? That doesn't seem exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I was 354 pounds. 354 pounds. Wow. And now I'm 260. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I thought you were going to say he's going to call you an almost dead. Because, <laughs> no, like, I mean, that's, that happens with people that are well, my, I was a diabetic in December, and now um, I'm, not, I'm not even just pre diabetic anymore. I'm not at all. Not at all. Oh, and all my carbs went to normal. All my, my, I cut my triglycerides in it by a third. That's amazing. It's not, not only amazing that you're doing that and all the weight loss, but, like, for you to have the um, awareness and strength to come out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, because. I know many people that have tried to lose weight, or, be, or say they want to, and it, you know, I know it's a big step to actually oh, do sure. it. Yeah, and I can't. I mean, obviously, I can't talk too much, but I was kind of a chubby kid in high school, mm -hmm. and I, I made some decisions too that like I'm not going to do sugar anymore, and I'm not going to, you know, eat these things and those things, and change your life, right? Yeah, and and I, you know, I became athletic. I started bicycling at that time, mm -hmm. and even playing tennis, and I, I was not athletic at all. Like I could be. Pull up. I can well, do a sit up. I'm in the gym every day now. Yeah, yeah, doing the elliptical for 45 minutes every day. People don't realize that. They think that just because you're skinny, that you're somehow you know better off. Well, I was 99 pounds up until I was in eighth, in eighth grade. But uh, I was taking uh, dextrin for hyperactivity, oh. and then it sped up my metabolism to the point where it was ridiculous. So what for hyperactivity? Yeah, and um, they were also giving it to adults for, for diet pills at the time. Interesting. And I, when I took myself off of it, I gained 60 pounds in three months. You know, maybe instead of giving kids pills for hyperactivity, they should just make school more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop feeding them sugar. I mean, a lot yeah, of, yeah. A lot of, mm, there's a lot of morning cereals that. Yes. Well, morning cereal is terrible for you anyway, because I mean, I, I, I'm kind of an advocate of if you are, if you're, if you're not healthy, give up this stuff for at least a while. You don't have to give it up forever, but give up bread. Give up. Yeah. You know, don't eat potatoes. I mean, honestly. Most of the carbs that I, I gave up, I've, I've determined that the reason they taste good is because of what you put on it, not because of yes. what they actually are. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because I, I, I was macrobiotic for a while. I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, yeah, and, and it's, um, it's extremely healthy. I was never sick the entire time I was on this diet. And um, after that, I started bringing things back into my diet. Mm -hmm. But um, I notice when I eat, like sometimes I do like french fries sometimes and I put like, ketchup on it or whatever. And I do, or I can even plain, but I noticed if I have a lot of french fries, and just like baked, like from Whole Foods, just put them baked in the oven, right. I will feel like fat, fatter the next mm -hmm. day or whatever, like the bloaty. You know, like, yeah. so I can totally understand like how it's pretty instant. Anyway. One of the things that I've noticed when I gave up sugar was uh, that I now enjoy cauliflower and broccoli yes. and asparagus. Yes. I didn't before. Yes, this is what I try to tell people. I was like, you got to get past that phase yeah. because right now you don't like it. But you, you will, your tastes change. Well, we make a great um, soup at home. It's, just, it's mostly cauliflower and, and chicken broth, and after you cook it for a while, you pour in some cheese, and, and it tastes just like a potato cheese soup, but you don't, there's no potato, and you don't miss it. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking is that the real story between my calico soul? Is it the broccoli and the cauliflower getting together? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, but. Because they're very different, you yeah. know, like some people really like broccoli, and some people really like cauliflower. I don't know very many people I like both. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, then I'm, then I'm by vegetable. Yeah. Apparently, when I was a little kid, uh, apparently I used to request broccoli. Wow. Uh, like, that was my thing. Well, I used, when my parents used to feed me peas, I used to put it in my mouth and take a glass of, a sip of milk, yeah. and deposit the peas in the milk, oh. and then just, and, and they, the milk hides so the you peas. wouldn't have to eat them exactly. Yeah, you were okay. Milk hides the other side. It was the other side. I hate. I was meeting potatoes guys growing up. It could have been some propaganda from my parents because sometimes they wanted me to eat healthy and then 
they would do those things so that I would think I like it. Oh um, yeah, you know, so, you like this. Remember, they used to say that. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> but actually, I didn't. I didn't really mind, and and I'm extremely grateful for that. That's good. I mean, you know, like we're my family is very uh, traditional. Like when I saw these cookies, even I was like, oh, it's a nice traditional cookie. It's mm-hmm. not like decked with like crap. Right. You know, like anything, like even sweets. Like people are just insane with them. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've come back now to where I eat you know, junk food and sugar things and stuff to, in moderation. I use this, uh, I, I eat this Russell Stover um, chocolate to made, it's made from um, plant-based sugar. The, mm-hmm. the, the, um, Which stevia. Is, should it, oh, stevia. Wait, what is, what do you mean it's plant-based? Well, stevia, stevia. Is, is, is sugar that's derived from a, a leaf and it has a low glycemic index, so you can use really? it on stuff. And I use it on, this comes in the sugar, uh, this, I'm sorry, this chocolate that Russell Stover makes and it tastes just like like your average chocolate. So stevia is good for you. It's, and, and it's, it's to better some extent for you. better for you, not as damaging. I guess. Right. I mean, I mean, no sugar at all is the best. But I, I, I'm doing lazy keto. Where yeah, basically, yeah. it's practice but perfect. I don't. I, it's practice but no perfection. I, I don't expect to be perfect at it. But I'm just doing what I can. But you know, the thing that I that strikes me about what you're saying, though, and what I always tell people is, and I'm not like a health guru or anything, but I've you know studied enough and I've become healthy. But I, you know, I eat junk food too. It's not that I don't eat it. But what I tell people is, the the way to lose weight, be healthy, be happy, even like to help your mood, is to not do things that are damaging to you. Mm-hmm. Like there's no like you know, diet off the shelf or like pills or like and like no, you just have to eat healthy and make good choices. <laughs> well, that's, it's, it's also like a lot of diets are about um, denying yourself something. Right. Whereas this this. It's a lifestyle, first of all, not necessarily a diet, but it's right. like choices where I'm just... Well, the word diet could mean lifestyle. We just have, have be, mm-hmm. be Americanized it to where it's like, oh, it's this thing you do for three weeks. Yeah, and but like, like, like you're just, the, the way the Atkins diet, Atkins diet is sold is is withdrawing from foods that you enjoy. Whereas um, it, like, what I'm doing is also labeled as, uh, as modified Atkins it's similar, but okay. I'm not getting... But wouldn't people say that the same thing about this, this keto thing? Because uh, people like their carbs and people mm-hmm. like sugar, so you're right. still kind of denying yourself well, that. Well, the, the idea is, I mean, yes, I did it, I cut, I cut cold turkey, but I've, I've never told people to, anybody who asks me, and people do now, because I'm not getting success, is do it slowly if you have to. I mean, so you'll find that you'll stop missing sugar so much, you'll find you stop missing the potatoes and, and the rice. And honestly, you go to a, most Asian place, like food restaurants, and they give you way too much rice anyway. Um, but Did you say let, food restaurants? Food re- Asian food restaurants. Oh, I thought you said food restaurants. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what other kind of restaurants are there? Well, I mean, I mean not specifically, the like, entire like, restaurant like you, you go to Panda Express, <laughs> and you know, like the, the amount of rice they give you is, is, is outrageous. Mm-hmm. And they I like, rice is good when you're hungry and you want 2,000 of something. Yes. <laughs> Mitch Hedberg. I love Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> the, uh, the, the escalator never really breaking his own thing. Temporarily. The temporary has, stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the convenience. I love Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, just take it easy. I mean, start withdrawing from these things. And, you know, and if you don't, if you find yourself missing something, like, uh, when I got to a certain BMI level, I, I got below 40. I was at 48, and I got... 40 BMI level. What, I just, is, what does that mean? It's, 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 it's a, a relationship. What's a, good, what's a good BMI? Oh, uh, the good BMI is uh, between 18.5 and 24.9. So well, that's the body mass in it. That's like yeah. a fat calculator. Like, right. Okay. It's, a, it's a relation between your weight and your height. Okay. Um, interesting. And I got to a, a certain level where I said, okay, I'm going to treat myself with pizza. So I went to the build your own pizza place, and I ate two slices, and I realized I didn't need the bread anymore. I just oh, ate the yeah. topping, the rest of it. And, That's interesting. And I, I yeah, your, your perception starts to shift. It's the same thing with bicycling that I tell people. Mm-hmm. Like right now, people that don't bicycle, they think I can never do it, or people that eat certain things, I can never do it. But when you make those decisions, you're also reinforcing yourself psychologically. Mm-hmm. And eating right and bicycling both make you feel good, so that reinforces you too. And actually, it's strange. What, what's really reinforcing me right now is is the um, I post about it on Facebook quite a bit. Like talking about my progress, and when people start saying you're being an inspiration, I go, oh, yeah. Now I gotta be. Now I gotta stay being an inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Now. It's self motivating. It's self motivating. It's it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, but I think it's great. I think you know. Anytime I just saw, a, um, not to hijack and talk about bicycling because I was here, but 
But um, I just saw a pretty big guy on a bicycle. Um, actually, the guy downstairs, uh, his name's Saturday. He's huge. He's like, you know, maybe 400 pounds. And he was talking about how he used to be a messenger. He's getting back into bicycling. Just the other day, I saw another guy. I don't know, maybe it's in the air. He was on the bike path. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, he was probably a little bit bigger than you. And he's like, yeah, I'm doing it like twice a week now. And, you know, I just, that makes me so happy when I see it. I used that. to be, I mean, you can't see on the radio, but I used to, I mean, I, I went, I'm not a size 42 jeans and I was at a size 52. Yeah. So I, it's never too late. I mean, this guy's getting on his bike. Um, my wife goes to a water exercise with a guy who is 400 pounds. Yeah. And yeah. water really helps him, but it's still, it's never too late to start if you are, unhe if you feel unhealthy in any way. Yeah. The doctor says, change something. Go ahead and start. And the thing is, the thing is, the, the rewards are instant. You know, because as soon as you start doing it, you start getting those self-rewarding feelings. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it'd be my second week, because I was so unhealthy, I lost 10 pounds. Yeah. Because it is, well, you lose a lot of water. When you yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, but I've been use, losing steadily about three to four pounds a week. Yeah. But even, I think even people that are, that are fit, I think it's good just to take a look at your what you do, you know, like to, you know, that you can always do more, and you, you know, like you said, and I'm, I'm a big a proponent of watching the sugar content, mm -hmm. because, you know, that will put you, that, they call it sugar blues, you know, yeah. where you can actually get depressed if you eat too much sugar, and, you know, the ups and downs and all well, that. Then there's the keep, but when, when you do all this stuff, the first few weeks you have something called the keto flu, okay, and so what's that? you basically feel like shit. Oh, for that's a good warning. Like two, or three, like, like for a couple weeks, uh -huh. but once you get over that, feeling, and, uh, and there's ways to get around it, um, oddly enough, in, up your insult intake, because you're, because you're, you're, up you're, your insult intake, you're, I can do that, <laughs> no, no, I'm in, do you just need to have, hang around with me, <laughs> did, you, did you hear why the popcorn got arrested, because it's a fucking loser, no, it was assaulted, <laughs> ah, that's actually pretty good, that's pretty fun, because <laughs> it's, it's like salt, <laughs> he likes the obvious ones. It's not <laughs> fucking obvious. That was a smart joke. It's dad humor. Yeah, well, I'm 47. I'm 48. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty fucking cool. So you're a little bit older than me. A little bit. So I'm younger and better looking. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Of course you are. You know, it just, I mean, first of all, having fur instantly makes you better looking. Well, you, you go to those furry conventions? No, I'm a fucking squirrel. Well, I don't you, need to. Well, I mean, I've never thought about sticking in one of those things. No, I told you earlier in the show that I don't like humans. Oh, well. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, do, you, do you have anything else you want to add, Mr. Clendenin, and or I think Stoney's already gone. We're, uh, so, um, we're, shoot, we're shooting a scene last night for Black Pumpkin. You want to do this on here too? So we were, we were shooting last night for, for Black Pumpkin and uh, Shooting a scene for Black Pumpkin? Yes, for the, for the movie Black Pumpkin. I, 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 by the way, I thought the title should be African American Pumpkin. Just so. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so as not to upset the, the politically correct. What we did was we were talking about Mitch Hedberg, we were talking about Stephen Wright, we were oh, talking right. about all these, like, oh, I was right. just sitting there thinking, like, this would be a great team up, you know, had Mitch Hedberg and Stephen Wright been together, could you imagine those guys just oh, bouncing off each other with their completely that's deadpan humor and had just out? do is bounce off each other, that's hilarious. Oh my god, that would just, so we were just, like, so that elevator joke, that, or the escalator joke, was one of the jokes that the guys were, because they... Man, he was crazy, because one guy would share his Mitch Hedberg joke that he remembered, and the other guys would just bounce back and forth. So I thought that was so kick-ass you guys just brought up Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Stephen Wright with, uh, I bought dehydrated water and didn't know what to add. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. good stuff. Those guys are just masters the with the... forever in the push-up position. <laughs> oh, damn it, right, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like both of them a lot, but I probably know, off the top of my head, I know more Mitch Hedberg jokes. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what, I did stand up for a while, uh, maybe Kurt knows that. That's um, cool. And uh, I was definitely in that zone. That was, and it's funny too because the one time I did it, uh, I was in San Diego, and I, I guess I was like having a little hard hard time remembering the jokes, which is notoriously those two guys, and they really thought it was funny. Like the look in my face, I guess, which is basically what they're doing. Like you know, like uh -huh. that's why you know Mitch wore the glasses and Stephen Wright always kind of did this thing. Like they're trying to remember what to say. And that's what gets laughs. And so I, I, I was afterwards when my friends were there, and they're like, those ladies at that table were totally laughing at everything. 
And I, I think it partly was because of that, because I was just, I would get this look in my face every time I tried to remember something. Who are you into now? What's that? Who, what comic are you into now? Are, are uh, like... You know what, I'm mostly those two guys. I, I'm not really, I, I guess if I were to think of new ones, I would say maybe Bill Burr. Yeah. Uh, I like um, Jimmy Carr, British Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carr's hilarious. Yeah, um, the one joke guys, you know, like, uh, yeah. like uh, who else is new that, that I like? Maybe Anthony Jeselnik. I, I wouldn't oh, do his style. Jeselnik's but... hilarious. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't do his jokes, but yeah. I think he's really funny. Well, I think only he could do them. I mean, yeah, yeah, or someone else other than like Lisa Lampanelli is another uh, the queen of me. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she's a Don Rickles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Don guy. Rickles. Yeah, yeah. Love those. There's lots of really great comics out there. I listen to comedy on the radio a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. It's cool. Interesting. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap up here. Uh, do you have anything? This is, you know, it, this this part of the show kind of just dribbles out. Okay. So, <laughs> so like 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 water out of glass. More like uh, the aioli at the end of the salad. Oh, um, like like like. You just want to sop it up with bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I can't have now. Yeah. Oh It's yeah. hard. Yeah. You can't have pasta either. Like, it's interesting, isn't it? Because. Uh, I feel like this is a, a, I guess I'm going back into diet now. But when I was at, in Italy the first time, you know, like, and I, I ate everything I wanted to all the time. Yeah. But um, I also walked a lot, and I sort of lived the Italian lifestyle, I guess, to some extent. And I felt so physically strong when I got back, you know, just from eating good food. You know, yeah. not just cutting out breads or not doing certain things, but just, you know, everything there, it has it has much less preservatives, it's, mm-hmm. it's fresher. Well, I, I, I learned that one of the things I'm, that I do with doing this diet is I look at the labels more. Uh-huh. So I was talking to this vegan who said I lost a lot of weight being a vegan. I go, you know, I think the thing we have in common is that we're both looking at labels. Yeah, yeah. You're we're just consciously eating what, doing, yeah. what we need. We, we, we can't eat certain things, so we look at it. And you know what I noticed, too? Um, I, I, I like it every once in a while I go to, like, Buddhist things and stuff, and they do the mindful eating. I notice sometimes you're really excited. Let's say you have like a cake, piece of cake in front of you. Like, oh my gosh, this cake is going to be so good. And you sort of eat it without thinking about it. You know, I think that's another thing that people do is they just eat. They're not yeah. really like enjoying it. Or you're like, eating so, most people eat so fast yeah. that they have no time to taste it. Yeah. And you, I don't know what it is. Like they, they think they're going to enjoy it. But then you, like sometimes I'll do that too. Like even with like a bag of like chips or whatever. And you're, you're kind of like, I go through like a whole bag of chips. Like I can do that. And, and, I'll, and, I'll, Pringles, like and I'll be like, I'll be like, what did I just do? Like, did I eat? Did I enjoy that? Well, I, I mean, when I was, uh, I used to have this this, this uh, analogy where I, what I used to do is I used to drive, be hungry, drive through the Carl's Jr. drive through and eat, and at no point did I make the decision to do any of that. It's almost like if you go to, um, if you're drunk and you're driving, you go to the bar, you drink, you get drunk get yourself home, but you never really decided, hey, let's go to the bar. Yeah. It's just, it, it was too, it was so automatic, and I, that, I think that is along the same lines, is that that's the extreme of it, but that's, yeah. you, you, you're not truly It's probably the same the symptom, too. It's probably the, whatever, trying to be happy, trying to get away from something, trying to enjoy some moment. Everybody tries to fake being happy. I mean, you, you can go to any, like, any big party, and just watch people. No one is happy. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> You're hanging out with actors. Yeah, that's, that's, like, <laughs> that's also true. I used to be a, more of a dancer, and I, I found, and I, 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 I hang out with actors now, and I'm more in that circle, and I had more fun with the dancers, and I think the secret is, honestly, is that when I was a, a dancer, we did what we wanted to do. We were dancing. When you're hanging, when you're with actors, they don't really act. They're just hanging out and talking. And yeah. Going. And I always thought that was weird. Like you go to sometimes, like you used to go to like workshops and classes, and they'd always be annoyed when they'd ask you to do something else instead of letting me go or whatever. I'm like, wait a minute, you're you should like doing this. This is what you want to do, right? The, the best people that I know are the most authentic. Yeah. And I, I, a lot of the actors that I hang out who are my friends, I find to be the most authentic. I mean, it's nice meeting you today. I mean, not to go smoke, but. You're very authentic. Oh, good. I mean, and so is so is Yacht Rock over here. Yeah, um, yeah Rock. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, I like and, and and so are you. You're very <laughs> Don't pet me like a fucking animal. I'm a person too. <laughs> I guess whatever you want to call it. One pet you with me. It's okay. He was trying to be nice here, to you. Here. Give me five. All right. Cool. <laughs> it's so touching. Uh, I like authentic people. So, so yeah. thank, well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, I I guess. Uh, 
I've always been like that, and it's always one of those things where I, that's why I always like New Yorkers because they're very much on the surface what they're thinking and feeling. Oh, yeah, when I when we went, went to New York, I mean, I really had that. Well, you actually did go to New York. Yeah, we went, okay. we went with my daughter's show choir, and uh, we had that moment where someone was someone. Uh, cut someone off who was a pedestrian and I did, hey, here, hey, I'm walking over here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I heard on TV, I thought that was a stereotype. No. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. But anyway, the authentic thing, yeah, it's, uh, that and being on time, those are my pet peeves. Well, for me, on time is actor, on time is actor late. So. On time is actor late. So I, I always I'll try to be, through that I always try to be early for everything. Okay. If I can. Okay. Um, because you never know what's going on with parking, yeah, especially yeah. for auditions and whatever. So, or if they're going to let you bring your guys for you. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Uh, but yeah, just being on. If you're on time, you're 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 stressed out. If you're early, at least you can take a breath in your car, stroll to the front door where yeah, you're yeah. going. I know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I've been scolded for being too early in different situations. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're an hour early, you sort of sit in your car going, scrap. Um, yeah, you're yeah. an hour early. Yeah, but if it's like an audition or something, it's yeah. productive because you can like, think about like, work on the script. Yeah. Anyway, all right. We're going to dribble out of this. This is dribbling. Uh, yeah. Dribble, Double dribble. dribble. Can, we, can we dribble out officially, Mr. Clint Denham? Did you say double dribble? Yeah. Oh. Double dribble. That was a good ball. That was a good game. All right, here we go. And that was a fumble, double fumble. Here we go. And you ready? <laughs> there we go. And Kurt. Kurt. Oh, Kurt. Clendenin. Clendenin. It's a tricky Clendenin. one. Clendenin. Yes, that's right. Or you could say like a like a uh, what was like That's right. Well, my my last name is Brock. It's uh, it's a very Irish name, so. Yeah, I got the Scotch Irish. Holy moly, I just realized that this podcast has gone over an hour. I didn't even think that was even a possibility on Anchor. I didn't even think you could go over an hour. So this is officially almost like a feature film of podcasts, this particular episode. What you heard there at the end was something that Alec Smart calls... Afterthoughts. So whenever he is the host of the show, today I was a, I was a guest on Inspirato Projecto. He calls some afterthoughts. The next stop is Union Station in downtown LA. Exit here for Almera Street. Connecting here with the Metro Red, Purple and Silver Lines, Silver Street. Metro and Municipal Buses, Full Bus, Mega Bus, LAX Flyaway, Metro Link and Amtrak. So he calls it Afterthoughts after the actual show, then we record about, about another 20 minutes or so, get more stuff in there. So I decided this time to decided this time to record it on the podcast. So you get a you get a you get a hint of what goes on in the K Chung Studios. Uh, my stop is here. I'm getting off, and we will talk more later. Goodbye.